what if it's a salad light light salad you know? <laughs> What, what, a, a very light salad, just like some lettuce and some spinach and like a little bit of vinaigrette. You just wake up and you're covered in like, you know, leaves. And, <laughs> and welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. This show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Axel Switching the Bits, joined every week by Jordan Swing. Shaky Cam. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, it's like an episode of Battlestar Galactica. Mm. And unfortunately, without shaky cam goodness, that is one Pedro Mateus. Stay up a little bit late. That can be easily resolved. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh, wait, man. are you going to show up in a red dress? Or are you going to be like Trisha Helfer and just like sed- and seduce guys, don't, Baltar? Don't give him ideas, man. Hey, wiggling along with us live, Shot Realm Dynamic, watching us on the Twitch, helping us form Wiggle Voltron. 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 Wiggletron. Wiggletron. Oh, Abe Wiggletron. Abe Wiggletron. Abe Wiggletron. Yes. All right. Let, let, you let, haven't let, heard let, of him? Let, He's a legend. I, yeah, it, I heard he was dead. <laughs> Apparently not. Lies. 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 So, legitimate warning. Um, you know, we, we've been playing around with the Dawes. I've been playing around with Dawes trying to make things uh, do other stuff. So, I decided, hey, I want to play around with the Reaper. I'm learning Reaper. I got a pretty extensive knowledge base in the six hours that I've had it. And I decided, Hey, why not use it for a show? And that's what we're doing. There's a hundred percent chance, 99.99% chance that everything could go down during the live stream. So. Or Ta-da. one of us will just be <laughs> muted forever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> muted recording everything. I, I, Jordan, I showed you like, ah, oh, this is what it looks like. Okay. It's, it's different, isn't it? It is definitely a matrix that you showed me. Mm. What, what you showed me is definitely a thing that can be described as a matrix. So, and that one plugin that is in French? Yes, also. <laughs> also, also <laughs> you installed Lawrence Fishburne on your computer, and that was a little weird. Oh, man. So if you're wondering, that's, uh, you know, we do, you, you get DAWs for, like, music production and all that fun stuff. I'm like, hey, that's brilliant. Let's use it for something it's not intended for. We use it for a live digital mixer to tie the five PCs in the studio together. So I'm seeing if this is going to be a better love story than Ador or um, Harrison. And yeah, I'm not going to play with Certainly a cheaper Vic. one. Yeah, Bitfig. Oh, dude, Bitfig wins, dude. It's like 400 bucks. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. We're not going to play with that. What, no. <laughs> what, what, what if they give you a coupon for 90 bucks for the bit, bit, Bitwig? I. So we've been up to. Only 90? Out of 400? <laughs> Well, you get four hundred dollars piece of software for ninety. Yeah. Um. So I, I mentioned I mentioned it. Uh. I'm I quit my job recently. Uh. I have a couple weeks left, so I'm gonna be moving on to other stuff. I. Yeah. That that's got that's got, that's kind of it. Like unless I'm 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 putting up terrible numbers in the weight room, but that's because I haven't lifted in several months. So that's just coming up slowly get that but surely. Oh man, extreme bootyosity or death. That's my motto. You need that t-shirt. Bootyosity or death. death. Yes. <laughs> this would be the part where Pedro jumps in. Nah, that would yeah, require so, to talk. So, he hates that. See, the, the closest thing to exercise that I've been doing is lifting this uh, IBM T43 um, <laughs> that I recently got for about 20 pounds uh, that without the battery weighs like three kilos. So there's that. <laughs> But yeah, the um, the case uh, is in terrible condition. It's full of gunk all over it. I think previous owner was a smoker and uh, also left it in the in a cupboard that was really really moldy for at least five years because it reeks of mold when you turn it on. Mm. So yes, well, I, saw, <laughs> I, I will I need to completely on, take it um, apart <laughs> on YouTube. How you can just like go on this laptop, you spit under the sink, you can wash it. Oh yeah, most of them are dishwasher safe. <laughs> Pretty much. As long as you leave it out to dry for like two weeks, yeah, you should be fine. Ah. <laughs> Do we need to dry the horse? No, man. The horse needs to be maintained at like a specific moisture level, or else it loses its flavor profile. Moisturize you know, me. That, Nay. That that boutique. <laughs> that boutique horse flavor, it's the steam. Linux. 
Update of the week. Yeah, yes. doing it live. We don't have the yeah, no, no, no effects. <laughs> nope. All right, yeah. So, uh, Steam releases. Valve is continually putting out these blog posts saying, "Hey, man, we're promoting your games. Don't tell people that we're not promoting your games, please." Uh, so we get we get a roundup every month of the previous couple months ago's best selling games. Um, we usually check in and see what Linux games were available. We had a, we had at least have a couple this month, or at least for April. Yes. And they are Total War, Rome, Voxel Tycoon, Legend of the Keepers, and Hobo Tough Life. It's better than Jehovah yeah. with a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, no, the, the Hobo of with French, a, um, My copy of that was in French. What? My copy of Hobo with the shotgun was, was in French for whatever reason. That, that's because Canada. Yeah. <laughs> you should know this, Jordan. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, Hobo a Tough Life actually does uh, look very good. When it first came out, I'm like, "Ooh, that actually looks very nice." The price is a little much, so I shot email to developers like, "Yo, could you uh, send us some keys? Because that looks really nice." And they didn't reply. I that's because you didn't spare him a quarter. I don't know, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, if they're making a game about hobos, man, they probably don't want your hobo ass showing up. Be like, can I, can I have a can I have a cup of hobo? Like, nay. I know, I know that w- that would be very close to my current financial situation, which is well, it's not that bad. <laughs> at least I'm not in any debt. Look at that, it this way, that's pa- Pedro. Positive. Listen, if you just take one week off from buying nicotine covered moldy laptops. But what else is he going to smoke these days? That was only 20 pounds. How much is this game? Uh, 20 pounds. Okay. Mm, math. I'm going to show you how this works out after the show. Indeed. Okay, fair. But uh, we, we, we got a re-release of a Steam update we got to talk about. Re-release? What are you talking about? We- yeah, uh, the mm. Steam client beta on May 24th had to be re-released because apparently Valve meant to include the PyWire libraries for the Linux runtime, but they forgot. And there was also a controller-related crash that got fixed, so that that's good. Outside of the like um, PyWire stuff for the runtime, there isn't any Linux specifics, but I honestly didn't n- notice any issues with the runtime not having the pipe wire i guess those will start manifesting as time goes on because when fedora 34 was released i think there's also some like drop-in replacement stuff so that like if something hasn't moved to pipe wire fedora's just like yeah we're just gonna fake pulse audio here but we're you're really just speaking pipe wire i think this is the actual data probably what i'm gonna say like the biggest (laughs) update that i've noticed uh with this since i tracked the beta uh now the only partially blinked out updates completely blinked out now well done yeah, no, you can't. Now you can't see anything. Yeah, it's, just, it's a void of nothingness. <laughs> it, well, it, it, previously, it, like when we clicked restart, you got that split second gone. N- nothing. Nope. Maybe, maybe if you if you hit print screen fast enough, you might have got it. But yeah. I don't know. I hope there's just some spiteful fuck. It's like suck it, stone. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're going to talk about this? Right. Yeah. Now you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. We got we got a new demo pitch to talk about, though. Uh-oh. Yeah, so Pavel Dudenchik, uh, the ex-paw, the guy's running SteamDB, we, he's, he's, the source, he's the source of a lot of stuff this week. He's been digging through Steam pretty heavily. Um, and apparently in the latest beta update, there is a brand new de- uh, download page that you can access relatively easily. It's a little bit more consistent visually with the new library settings there's a photo of it here for the video viewers for the audio viewers it's beautiful oh my god and it's new so i hate it but like i mean it look it looks like a download page it it doesn't look like anything insanely special uh but you know steam is still in the early 2000s for much of its ui it's good to see it move slightly into the new millennium Mm. I don't know. And yet, man. it's the most fully featured one currently. You know what? It, yeah. Just so long, just so long <laughs> as it's going to maintain the ability to schedule downloads for like sixteen hours to two weeks in the future. I don't want to lose that. That's a neat ability that makes me go, "Huh? What's that?" Oh, oh. oh also, also, apparently, there is um, XPod did detect that there is uh, updated settings menus for like the Steam system settings. Okay. But he wasn't able to access that as well. So apparently they're doing some major UI overhauls. Now, one thing I would like is an option to add a download to the queue without it jumping to number one. 
Yes, mm-hmm. like some sort of ranked stopping ordering. Stopping the one like, that's already going yeah. and going that one. I'm like, oh yeah, or, I want to like download that late. And like, nope, we're downloading that right now. Or, or, or like, Arthur you know, made a good I, suggestion. And, no gone. Okay, Arthur had made a good suggestion in Discord earlier that said, um, "How about a download all button?" Yeah, yeah, that would actually work uh, around most of the issues right now. Just download everything. I, there, done. To, to, to <laughs> Ven's point, I would like a BitTorrent style like download ordering priority thing. That would be super handy. Like, I care about this, all this other stuff. You can download at your leisure. But yeah, there, it's kind of all or nothing. It's pretty bad. It does that automatically already, sort of. Uh, it prioritizes the games that you've played recently. It'll download them as soon as the download comes out. If it's a game that you have installed but you haven't played, it'll put it to like eight hours in the future. <laughs> let me let, let me let me let me put it simply. Let me order the damn downloads, Valve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Now we kind of buried the lead because. Uh, Little rumor came out. Little rumor came out. And I'm like, hey, you know, just maybe, just possibly. Steam's working on now, what we were speculating last week was make possibly a VR controller or what? Neptune, whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. And okay. But it's the Steam Pal, not the Steam Pie, even though it's going to be called the Steam Pie. And ours, ours. As an exclusive about Valve making a Switch-like portable gaming PC, we can confirm some, but not all, of what's in store for the codename Steam Pie. Yeah, man, I don't know. I don't know. When See, at first, this is all we had. This is all we had. You know, more from Valve. Mm. It's like, there, there's a name. There's a name. Then ours is, they just dropped it Steam on the table. Pal. Yeah, during this, when I was, um, before this article came out, I'm like, huh, you know what? It could be a portable system. I, I could definitely see that being a thing. And, uh, you know, ours seems to agree with that. They claimed, like, we have some insider knowledge on this. And, yeah, I'm just, like most people, I'm just looking forward to the Steam Pie memes. That's about it. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't know. A mobile mobile offering from Valve would be interesting because then it's all, all the questions get raised of what is this thing? What could it be? What kind of hardware is it running? Is it just going to be like a dumb term, terminal for like Steam Link or is it going to be like something that you can actually locally run games on? Because that, that was kind of the big problem with like the Smach or the, the the other ones is that you can play like 3D games sort of, but if unless you really like 720p low, you're not getting much out of the system. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm curious if like I don't know maybe there's some like compute offloading or I I, I don't know like it it seems it seems weird that Valve would just release a tablet. Well, you got to think about it, man. Yeah. Maybe they hired the guy who made the uh, portable Threadripper system. Yeah, <laughs> with the tape. Mm. I don't yeah, know. And, 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 and the, and the little seems... uh, diesel generator on wheels that yeah, you drag behind it. Optional <laughs> accessory, to be fair. <laughs> this seems like a, a bit of a strange time because the smock just announced that uh, we're dead in the water, you guys. Unless we get some funding, uh, we're kind of dead. And then, oh yeah, more project neptune stuff gets released and uh, ours says yes we can confirm that it is an all-in-one gaming pc portable type of thing Uh uh-huh and your uh basis of that is what i mean yeah don't reveal your sources but uh where's the beef listen they needed some clicks show me the meat i don't know know. (laughs) that's a lot to extrapolate from they never in the article straight out say and this is the they they didn't go you know unconfirmed or people familiar with the steam pies um no they said it's like very likely the subject of the announcement that valve co-founder gabe newell uh hinted to in panel in conversation at new zealand school i was like really you're going off of yeah, that. There, there's, there's not, there's not a lot. Um, there's, there's not a lot actually in the in the article itself. They talk a little bit about like having to compete with the Switch and sort of other hardware shit that Valve has put out. But I, again, it's it's weird. It's strange. It doesn't seem like the move Valve should be making. But who knows? I'm I'm more than willing day, to be surprised. It is Valve, and Valve's going to Valve. I mean, this is this would have been an interesting project project to release maybe a year ago but i want you to think about this gentlemen the smash Z will have been beaten to market i have infinite faith that this is real they will have been beaten to market by valve hey at least valve hardware. can put out hardware 
at least they can put it hard. Yes. <laughs> they have a track record of putting out at least the Steam controller and the uh, Steam Link. <laughs> do you think oh, and the, and the index, and the, and the, and indexes. the Vive. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they'll do the victory lap and call it the Steam Boy? Maybe they should. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it is going to be like a Switch type of thing, yeah, call it the Steam Boy, <laughs> please. <laughs> Well, I got some good news, ladies and gentlemen. Um, tonight on Linux Gamecast Weekly, we've agreed to uh, pick up some cold Coors Light and from Texas and drive it all the way to Georgia in under twenty-eight Uh-oh. hours. <laughs> well, uh, you can, you two can live that particular dream by opting into the experimental convoy beta that um, yeah, Euro convoy. Truck and American Truck Simulator uh, currently have going on, and yeah, it is um, basically Darius from the uh, SCS team just went. Okay, we have a bit of a beta. It enables multiplayer, and you can try and play uh, with your friends. They are very much looking for feedback and bug reports, obviously. And this is like multiplayer, proper multiplayer for American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator before that. It's been something that has been requested since day one. Mm -hmm. The game came out and people went, we have this, but multiplayer, please. Uh, Well, this is the start of that. And if... um even if the official multiplayer doesn't support it, there's talk of maybe like having a secondary vehicle that's not just the truck. You could have something else uh, to drive around in, like regular cars. Even if that's not like actually maybe, implemented m- by the time. Could we get it just randomly, just off the top of my head, maybe a bitching black Camaro? Possibly, or Trans Am. How about a yes. Trans Am? Like, literally any car, just a regular car that you could drive around instead right. of having to drive I'm your truck into everything. Someone needs all. to do okay. that. Uh, 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 yes. Okay. Okay, Sterling. Sure. I, I I want them to like add the goat from Goat Simulator. <laughs> just like dri- dri- drive the goat around. <laughs> Oh man, that honestly, that kind of got my attention. I'm not interested in the truck simulator. I know people will cut you over that, if he's, but you know, simulation games, never my thing. I know Pedro had a minute with it, and um, I didn't. Yeah, it, it's a game that'll put you in the zone. It's, you'll just go, okay, I and we're driving truck. It, enjoyed watching the guy <laughs> trying to move the big log or whatever it was that was entertaining. But if we could get multiplayer so we could race. I mean, mm-hmm. yes. oh, 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 no, deathmatch. Well, that's going to happen eventually. Anyway, it's a race. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, re- <laughs> yes. re- regar- regardless of what modes they actually implement, we will turn it into deathmatch. Right. But it should be fun. We got a couple of game updates and some new games this week. Uh, that was all of our game updates, though. But of a Seraphest, that yes. sounds like something that you m- would very much hope to be removal reversible later in life if you wanted to have kids. That it's it's it sounds like a Steam sale, honestly. Viscera Fest. <laughs> like, yeah, it go, sounds go like an AMD games, processor, maybe the last generation bulldozer family one. Uh, but no, it's Viscera Fest. It's uh, currently in early access, and I very much look forward to it coming out of early access because it is very very quakey in its presentation with a lot more color well a lot more purple i suppose instead of brown uh and yes you can see protagonist person there uh, there's a bit of a story to this one. Uh, there's a lot of like in between missions. There's some cutscenes that show protagonist person uh, with the, her alien lover fiance person, and yeah, it's there's a story here, and everything is purple, and it looks like Quake. So okay, all right, fine. <laughs> I, I want to play. <laughs> um, I, I'm done with the. Uh retro remakes of uh, classic games in Unity. They don't feel right. They don't never look right. Um, <laughs> Maybe they'll feel right. Actually, Strife wasn't terribly bad. All things considered. Neither was Dusk. <laughs> no, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm Neither not, was Dusk. Yeah. You, you <laughs> can't play the same game for the third time. Maybe is what I'm getting at. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Oh, ask, you can. Ask, uh, li- <laughs> ask Linux gamers from circa like, your era, actually. Yeah. Do, do not yeah. speak to me of the old magic witch. <laughs> Quake 3 everything. <laughs> Everything's Quake 3 because that's all we got, baby. I'm down with it. I'm down with it. This is out uh, currently 1274, 15% off if you want to pick it up uh, before June 2nd. And that's from uh, 1C, right? I mean, they do solid yeah. stuff. They do solid yeah. stuff. Yep. 
If that is your ship. Does it have multiplayer? Does it have death match? It doesn't. No, uh, no it's single player. No. No. Why, why even bother making a Quake game without multiplayer? See, anymore? that's the spirit. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, uh, f- uh, the last game we got is How We Got Here. How did we get here? You may ask yourself, this is not my beautiful, this is my beautiful no, this floating is, <laughs> yeah, I tree mean, island it's, land. It's, I mean, it's free, so uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's mm-hmm. a very short platformer. Apparently, you can blow through it in under an hour. Um, people are saying it's, it's very good. Um, it has a very distinct visual style, and it's from the makers of Introvert Consequences and Life is a Pizza. So, okay. all have Linux versions. The Euphoric Brothers have been mm-hmm. putting out their stuff on Linux, so I think we got to give them a shout-out for this. But, yeah, uh, if you want a free little short platformy experience, um, there it is. You can Maybe. check it out. I would basically show up for the um, alligator. The scorpion is just seems like in the. Oh, was that a tree bear? No, and it's a tree kitty. No, a tree. Um, I don't, I don't, where, it's when, a when does the first ball game start? <laughs> tree capybara. Yes. Yeah. All right. What do we need? Cat tree bearer. Cat tree bearer. Meow. Cat tree bearer. <laughs> should work on everything. Should, should work, work on, on everything. everything. Work okay. On yeah. I have All some right. old laptops I can put to the test. <laughs> I've, as long as they're running Windows, it should work. Oh, Coming man. up next, I bought one of the video cards that's getting put out of uh, service, so I'm going to go crumble into dust now. Yeah. Excuse me. If you wake up in the morning with a taste of cellulose in your tongue, then you're probably Jordan. And, if it's and you should stop eating a paper. Cannibal. You filthy cannibal. <laughs> no, no. What, what, if it's a cell, what if it's a cell phone telephone? What if it's a salad, light, light salad? You know? <laughs> what, what, a, ver- a very light salad, just like some lettuce and some spinach and like a little bit of vinaigrette. You just wake up and you're covered in like, you know, leaves and ham and crudelas. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> well, people wake up with like the cucumbers over their eyes. That can't be that different, right? I would have questions if I woke up with you. <laughs> oh, yeah, those beauty masks. I, I don't get yeah, that yeah, either. <laughs> With the, yeah, with, the, with the cucumber eye caps. If you want to pay for Pedro's trip to the spa day, you should head on over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast, where you can give us a variable amount of money for a variable amount of stuff in return, like access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by uh, subscribing to us on Twitch, by the way. You should do mm-hmm. that as well. Get all those notifications. Smash that fell. Film, etc. Smash, et cetera, et cetera. smash those cucumbers. Smash that fell. Smash <laughs> the cucumber into your eye hole. LGC cares. Uh, yeah, you can get access to our show can notes. You can make suggestions. After you're done with that. Sticking them in your eyes? I don't Probably. see why not. I guess. You're, are, are, do you have as long as you didn't get any eyes? of the weird cream, that that's probably not well, edible. But okay, I, I cucumber what, should like, be cream right? in your eye. What? I'm what? thinking about the dangerous oh, situation. What if you're like getting some cucumbers together and you know you, you've salted them, and, but you've set some aside for your eyes without salt, and you get them mixed up, and you, you end up with salt in your eyes needs more remember don't put salt in your eyes don't put salt in your eyes put salt in your eyes um yeah but don't put salt in your eyes put money in our bank accounts um via patreon you get a bunch of cool stuff it's good there's pre pre super shows and it's an extra hour of linux gamecast content that you get access to you can listen to the live recording if you're in discord uh you get a video version if you're an executive producer so good good stuff we got a store store at linuxgamecast.com buy some t-shirts buy some coffee mugs buy some stickers to put on the nipples on your t-shirt to make you look like a real stud they blink so do the masks so do the coffee cups they blink in and out of existence but the fluid the fluid within the cups stays where they are so you just take a sip and then hot coffee spills on you no that's not how they work they're just regular coffee cups and we got Amazon Wish Zones. If you want to buy stuff for us, help fill out the studios. Um, you can send us notes that we have to read. Um, if you send Ben some stuff, you get your name on the wall behind him right there. Right under John. You can be beneath John if you, that's what you're into. You should go for like one Vin's I am. Man, that'd be expensive. Never mind. I mean, you, if, if you pay enough, you might be able to get like column two. You can go up right next to Carl. Or that's, Mike how you, G. that's how you know we're struggling. We're like, no, you get a letter. Yes, exactly. <laughs> indeed. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, links to all that stuff are on linuxgamecast.com. Just move your mouse over to the support tab. Check that out now. Have you updated feel- your wish list and like removed the stuff that you currently own? I have. Okay. Yes. I might have been creeping on your wish list. Okay, right. good. That yes, <laughs> now, now, now it's time to feel extra old because mm-hmm. Kepler... 
as EOL, you may have bought yourself a 600 series GPU or a 700 series GPU in recent memory. Uh, and you put that in your uh, computer, played some Linux games, had a good time. Uh, but now, unless you want to move to the long lived drivers, you may have to switch to Nouveau. Yeah, uh, so uh, the 600, 700, and that one weird ass like mobile GPU that Dell put in that one Steam box that one time is losing mainline driver support. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I, bu- I bought myself a 670 super clocked as like a graduation present. And now I just feel extra old. I don't know, man. I mean, I just, I'm glad I'm not one of the fools that end up buying like a seven series. I mean, oh, wait, Oh, hi. <laughs> good times. We, we had a good time. Um, didn't you have two seven seventies? Shut up. Or was that the five sixty TIs or was it both? <laughs> Shut up and <laughs> but yeah, no, the long lived branch will keep you uh, supported if you're still rocking that 770 or the no, the 560 is for me, so that's not going to work. Uh, that's already been done a long time. Uh, but yeah, for another three years uh, for your 600 and 700 series cards and some of the laptops with the 800 series, not all. The, the 800 the, the, series. Let's just say there's a reason that that never came to the desktop. There was the one. There, there was the one. There was the one. What other ones were there? The laptops. The laptops had Ooh. the uh, 800 series. No. Oh, the one. Which ones? I, I don't remember them. laptop specific model names. <laughs> I don't. I don't know, Mister. I have six thousand right. laptops sitting next to my head. What, what yeah, I know head? mine, but I can't afford the laptops with dedicated GPUs nowadays. Now, can I? So, okay, you don't, <laughs> don't necessarily it, have to qual- quality um, other than quality. The Nuvo drivers <laughs> will still get you 2D and basic 3D acceleration, so that's decent. The only thing you get to worry about um, that you're going to be kind of stuck on later on is SLI. Mm-hmm but more importantly power management that that's still not worked out and these things they're thirsty so um yes. yeah keep that in mind <laughs> how fast does the fan spin that's how fast they're gonna spin <laughs> yeah you, 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 ever, you ever think nouveau is actually gonna get like power management because i know nvidia is very well invested in making sure that nouveau does not succeed in anything they try to do <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's it, planned obsolescence kind of pisses me off, man. And uh, mm-hmm. it, I, I'm surprised there hasn't been like a pocketbook opened up by some company and like, yo, we, we got these and all these systems and maybe, maybe this is going to be the catalyst for it. I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. here's some money. Go figure this shit out. Mm-hmm. That that would be nice because if we could get um, proper. Oh, and by the way, with never the release it to anyone but us. Yeah. <laughs> MIT license. It may maybe. or may not get leaked. Mm. <laughs> Oops, girl. Okay. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, we said it on Wednesday. I mean, you can hate NVIDIA up and down. You do got to give them some credit for their long term support, though, because mm-hmm. you're going to be able to keep the credit. It, it, it exists, unlike AMD. Yes, this is true. This yeah. is true. Why would OpenGL and Vulcan ever want to make out, man? It's well, uh, according to Rohan Garg from Calabra, there is currently no uh, real world use for any of this, but the prospect of getting uh, OpenGL and Vulcan to cross talk between each other and having access to each other's uh, extensions is very much a thing that there uh you can do now because they have a new low overhead extension in mesa the exc external objects uh and that very much allows for crosstalk between opengl and vulcan uh and that in my head opens a lot of doors i don't know exactly how feasible that would be but that makes things interesting if you're a game developer that's Let's say you really like Vulcan, but you have to do OpenGL for something, but you really like that one extension that Vulcan has. Well, now you can get through the Mesa drivers, uh, can get uh, the application to talk, uh, even if it's OpenGL, it can talk to that one Vulcan extension, for example. 
yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, the, the example the example they give in the article is like oh well if you have like a large legacy OpenGL application uh, but you want to start adding some more mo- modern features in Vulkan as well that provides an, an alley for that I don't know when you when you start considering something like um, this combined with zinc then some very interesting gears start to turn yeah you have in like terms two of, things we're not sure what to do with a, <laughs> with a wild card <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and one thing this uh, article mentioned that I wasn't entirely aware of is that the Iris uh, graphics, the Iris drivers for the Intel uh, Iris graphics, it actually makes use of the Gallium framework, while the i nine six five drivers do not. So that's interesting. <laughs> I mean, it, it does make sense. The i five i nine whatever those are like old ass drivers too. Like I remember those those were like in mainline anything that's not Iris. Uh, it could yeah. have released two weeks ago or twenty years ago. <laughs> well, Exa- no, that exactly. would be the i nine one five. Yeah. <laughs> so our next story uh, comes from the. Did I? Did you have a stroke, old man? Then nay, I didn't. Um, <laughs> Careers at Tesla. Yes, that's right. We're talking about Tesla, you know, the car company. Um, Linux game development at Tesla is the uh, category of job that you can apply for. Engineering and information technology. You can move to Palo Alto, California, full time. They want, uh, let's see, what do you need if you're going to be a good foot? A good foot. Nitrous. So, you're an awesome <laughs> software engineer. Tough challenges. Okay. You're excited by building open source software, Linux, Mesa, Vulkan, OpenGL, Proton, or Lutris, Wine, etc., and contributing back to the community. Okay. You do not need to know the Linux kernel in depth yet, but you can be expected <laughs> to be an awesome engineer who can demonstrate that they can learn and execute fast and be proficient in at least one of the domains listed above. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, uh, was that for the pel- developers only? Because uh, I'm very proficient in a lot of those, <laughs> except for you know the development heavy ones. That 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 I don't know. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. T- Tesla's also one of those places where go th- go there for the short tenure because they're gonna work you until you burn out. But this is this is pretty cool. Uh, apparently, we got to shout out Frenchie because he helped uh, with the job description. Uh, Tesla reached out to him first. He's in chat down there taking credit for all this. Um, so yeah, I, cl- clearly this has to do with the infotainment system, right? Uh, no, 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 at all. Um, my working theory right now is uh, seeing that Valve was going to be releasing a portable game console. Musk was like, fuck that noise. We can build one, too. You know what? And you're like, hey, hey, we build starships. We can build a portable gaming unit. Yeah, it's, it's so portable because you can just drive it wherever you want. <laughs> the battery life, man, is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of batteries, didn't they build a flamethrower as well? <laughs> No, they, Pedro no, no, they the, 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 the console is the flamethrower. Flame <laughs> yes, the, not a flamethrower. Yes, yes. <laughs> Fla- flame projector. Legally distinguishable between an actual flame n- n- technically a tool, not a weapon. Yes, <laughs> just a like torch. Pedro, a tool, not a weapon. <laughs> I don't know. I thought we'd give that a mention in case somebody wants to go work at Tesla and like do the Tesla thing. And I don't think that's going to be a remote position. So yeah, California yeah. way. <laughs> You might get a free Tesla, though. Not promising anything. Yeah, but. right. Yeah. <laughs> what? Laka. Laka. Laka is a distribution for uh, RetroArch. Uh, it packages everything up into a nice little package that you can then enjoy on your platform of choice. Uh, Laka 3.0 is out. It comes with a bunch of stuff like updated RetroArch, a bunch of cores. Uh, you got primetime Vulkan on Intel, AMD, and Raspberry GPUs. And if you have a hacked switch, you can run Laka on it now. Which is kind of neat. Can't uh, see so, it. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, sure. it's the only short, what, two of the pins uh, for the Joy-Cons. Uh, but yes, the 64-bit OS uh, version for the Raspberry Pi 4 is also available with 3.0, and you don't get 32-bit. That was actually part of the issue that when I, uh, I got the Pi Boy DMG here, when I got this, I very much wanted to put Laka on it, and the thing was, oh yeah, there is no version for the Raspberry Pi 4, but why not? Nope. Uh, well, it, it's here now, but it's 64-bit only, so there will uh, there were there are a couple of things that have issues with the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi operating systems. 
So keep that in mind. There will be some breakage. I have a lot of breakage, but yeah, the <laughs> it's nice. It's 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 very nice to breakage have the, in general, um, or just this shit because I'm running 64 bit on my player right now. You got no problems. Uh, gaming stuff. Yes, okay. there's a lot of there we go. finicky there we go. stuff. All right. Yes. <laughs> so for those of you who want to play video games on your Raspberry Pi, stick to the uh, 32-bit systems. The RMHF. You can R- just R- download R- RetroPie that has the 32-bit version that will keep you going. Yes. <laughs> you, 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 don't, you don't want that RMV5 tell? Oh, man, I'm getting some college research department flashbacks now. <laughs> no, I don't want to go back in the wire closet. No, don't make me do it, Chris. But yeah, Vulcan, having Vulcan uh, actually enabled with this version is very nice. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right on. Right on. Now, we don't normally talk about paranormal activities. We've talked about paranautical activities, but yes. every now and then you got to bring up the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> a spoopy ghost so spoopy uh yeah the this is a as they describe it a procedural sprite animation tool made with ensign uh, i'm sure someone will correct me then that that's how ensign not ensign but whatever you're wrong the, um, <laughs> I, I, i'm just used to it at this point but yeah uh if you're thinking okay procedural sprite animation tool Right. Uh, you know that every engine, like your Unreals and your Unities and your Godots, all of them have that included? Well, uh, apparently this is for the people who don't want uh, a full uh, game engine attached to their sprite uh, animator. Which, when you look at the fact that it is very much based on Ensign, which is a 2D game engine, I guess there goes that. I'm mean, uh, just waiting for it to make the pants wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> wiggle them pants. It's wiggle a comes- them pants. <laughs> oh, wiggle pants. There it is. Yes. <laughs> they wiggle. And yeah, the, that is the stuff that you do. And yeah, it is basically Ensign without the game stuff. It's just the sprite animation. That That's what this is. So there's very much still an audience for that there, hey, I assume. Yeah, we well, do have to assume somebody might want to make some animated GIFs without um, breaking out the full... Um, yeah, don't Unreal, start Unreal Unity. Engine. <laughs> yeah, UE5 or something like, yeah, yeah, what are you doing? I'm making major Rudy banana. <laughs> and, and I mean, like, it's, it's always good. It's always good to see, like, game development tools covered on Linux Steamcast. I know we're here mostly to talk about, like, the games themselves. But, you know, I think a lot of people who make games to listen to LGC. Yes. So it's always good to signal boost some of the projects that they might be able to use. Or maybe if you're interested in making some games, something you can fuck around with. Tools, man. Hey, if you're interested in streaming games, you probably looked around and you're like, hey, man, I'll get a stream. Holy shit, why do they cost so much? Um, oh, God. Right. That button is terrifying. <laughs> this is the best buttons. It's Jordan buttons and Pedro buttons and me buttons and button buttons. Why are we in such what a... About ask- what about reverse ASCII penis buttons? I can do that now. All right. So go fuck yourself. Mm. I, I will with an ASCII penis. Yeah, no, you can. I walked through all of this nonsense. This is controlling OBS with Raspberry Pi powered Stream Deck on Linux. It's relatively easy to set up. And the main reason I brought it up is I'm going to show you right at the beginning of the video. If I can go to the beginning of the video. Yeah. There we go. So. What happens with a re- I hate you, YouTube, really, with these things. <laughs> <laughs> you want to watch the thing. Right. Um, so with the current Stream Deck, if you're using the um, Stream Deck UI, uh, what's been around for a couple of years, the interface using like XD tool or something like that to do the window capture, when you switch scenes, you press a button in your Stream Deck, you are going to lose... Your window focus. So your cursor flies off and you can't control them using um, Golf with Friends here as an example. This is using WebSockets, OBS WebSockets, so I'm able to switch scenes, activate sources, and I never lose focus of the game. This is doubly important if you're doing everything on a like single screen monitor because you're playing the game full screen and you can't see anything. And if you press the button on the stream deck, boom, it's going to drop you out of that. Not with this. All you need is a little card. A little pie. It's magical, kids. It's magical. A little pie. <laughs> yeah. Hearts. Like a little love. Like one of those. <laughs> um, I mean, setup is painfully, brutally simple. You just install the pie image. You know, you can clone the image and put it on a little card, stick it in the pie, plug the deck in, give it an IP address, and 
that's it, man. Install a module, connect OBS WebSockets, you're done. So, yeah. Neither that's, of these two yahoos give a singular fuck about it, but I know somebody out there. I who, have a screen a stream deck on my wish list if you want to go buy me one. You should check out. Uh, uh-uh. I'm not talking. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the viewing audience here. Dude, do they the make show. one? I know they make one with like three buttons. Do they make one with just one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they make one. Apparently, they make one with like four buttons. Just the one line, four buttons. Right. And it, mm. I bet that it costs like sixty dollars or seventy dollars, something like that. Because you'd be right. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they do be expensive, but hey, this will finally allow you to uh, set up reverse ASCII penises correctly for your navigation system. Excellent. Yes. I always want to invert my ASCII penis. Coming up next, uh, I don't. I don't know. There's there's some like big Jackie Brown vibes that this game bag. is putting out, and I'm I'm into it. Throwing chairs at hunt down. It's time for the hunt down. Actually, that's a lie. It's time for the chair acquisition. We're throwing chairs at hunt down developed by easy trigger games done on the unity engine. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks. What is it in the mayhem filled streets of the future where criminal gangs rule and cops fear to tread? Only the bounty hunters can free the city from the corrupt fist of felony, lay waste to the criminal underworld and make a killing in this hard boiled action comedy arcade shooter. Uh, so we got to thank easy trigger for sending us some keys. Uh, big shout out for that. So I guess let's get into it. I get to go first this time. Ooh. So on Fedora 34, 64 bit, uh, I tested this on both the 8150 running the RX 580 and the R9 3900X with the GTX 1080 Ti, both launch out of the box. Um, the 580 has a little bit of trouble with the CRT filter, it drops down to 30 frames a second. Uh, the NVIDIA card can do everything at 60. But I turned off the CRT filter because it sucks. Um, yeah, uh, controllers worked out of the box. I used, I paired two DualShock 4s wirelessly for the couch co-op. Um, and you get Xbox mappings. There's no option to change it to PlayStation 4 mappings. Whatever. It's fine. Uh, voice acting in your hipster pixel game was quite a bit of a twist. I'm like, oh, I was expecting text, not actually people talking. So that was kind of nice. And I'm really glad they have the uh, the narrator from the trailer doing all the call outs because that, that guy's great. Uh, whoever whoever he is. Um, pixel art, super well done. There's no character blindness. Everything is super well defined. The art style is very, very good. And fun wise. Yeah, man, the, the game just oozes with style. I'm, I'm really into this. This is kind of like what bad dudes in the old arcade game was trying to evoke. It's like someone made a version of Bro Force that takes itself just like one iota more seriously. It's not doesn't take itself seriously by any stretch, but a little bit more than Broforce, just a titch. Um, the gameplay is pretty consistent with other sort of horizontal scrolling shooters from the 8 and 16 bit era. Jump, shoot, swap out your guns, jump, shoot some more. It's not awful, but it's pretty ordinary. Uh, unlike what we were throwing chairs at last week, this game actually has well thought out enemy placements and good combat that make when you die feel like, oh, this was my failure. I should have seen this coming. I need to improve as opposed to I just need to wait longer. This is this is how you actually force people to be patient by like forcing them, give, giving like Pedro likes to say, giving them enough rope to hang yourself. Uh, the big miss here is lack of online multiplayer, though. I have a girlfriend who I can convince to be my player, too, but 2D scroller shooters aren't really her strong suit, and, you know, some people don't even have that option. And in quarantine era 2021, we need whatever online multiplayer we can, and this game would not work well with, like, remote play, especially with the delays. No, it's not not gonna, not gonna do. Uh... The flash is what kept me going. I would say like this game is a lot flashier than it is substantive, but it's it's some pretty good flash, and I just enjoy being in the world. It's very early '90s grim, dark, tastic tech noir, and I'm I'm just here for it. I'm gonna give it three chairs. Man, what can I say? Uh, out of the box, I ran this at UHD, just playing around with it. No slowdowns, and last like you said, and you kick on that uh, CRT filter. In in all fairness, right there, you know, it ships out of the box with that disabled, with a big warning on it, like, "Hey, cut this on. You're gonna get the slows." Yeah, at UHD with the 2060, I think at one point it got down to like 45 when it got kind of heavy. But this is on the Threadripper 1920X through two gigs RAM, running Debian 11 ish, Debian uh, Bullseye. So, picked up the x right out of the box, wireless, no problem, the Bluetooth, that's fine. Now, I want to thank them personally for putting the art back into hipster pixel art. Man, good job on that. And double so for that uh, retro soundtrack. That is really, really nice to murder too. 
I mean, bumping. I enjoyed it. Good night. Now let's talk about the fun because, man, this is a fun game. It just simply is. I was smiling the entire time I was playing it. Almost right out of the gate, you get to slaughter an entire level of Canadians. It's everything I thought it was going to be. Um, Randy, unfortunately, kicked my arse, but I think I can get by him with just a little bit of practice. He was the lead, the king Canadian in this situation. But um, that's why this game works, man. Checkpoints, weapons, ammo drops, baddies, all placed with extreme care, and it keeps you hella engaged throughout the entire level. I was thinking about just active having you know getting that positive feedback and just the challenges it's kind of like uh, half-life 2 where the shit just never stops but you're enjoying it so much you don't notice now the game most certainly will fuck you but it, it's that kind that's just enough just enough to make you you know practice uh i was kind of having flashbacks the first time i got curb stumped by one of the mini bosses to hollow knight the first time you get a fight um the hollow knight Last, uh, what's her name? Hmm. Can't think of her name. Right Silk now. Song. Yeah, uh, yeah her. that one. She wrecked me. <laughs> she wrecked me for like yeah. thirty minutes, but it made me angry. Just that little bit of angry where I put it down. Yeah, Horn- Hornet. Hornet. Thank you. But I'd come back, and this this did it. I closed it. I'm like, all right, I need to check for like windowing. Can it? By the way, you can put it in a windowed mode. And I ended up playing it for you know another fifteen minutes. So well done, well done on that. Uh, I think the kids call it getting good, but. You get my point, man. Mechanics-wise, it's run and gun. Invincibility power slide. I'm very, very happy to see that because it comes in handy. Ammo is a little bit scarce on that. And um, your Infinity Pea Shooter, it doesn't have much much in the way of stopping power. So there is that. You get some recharge death knives. I was enjoying it. Who did you play with, uh, Pedro? Uh, The guy from He-Man. Yeah, the guy with the jaws. Yeah, I played uh, with the um, but, uh, what did they call him? John um, Smith or something like that? The, 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 <laughs> because the, the, of the, the, the robot pun, dude? pun. No, yeah, no, no. It's I the dude the with guy. the metal jaw. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I played as Anaconda because you know that's a great name. <laughs> I played with the uh, cyborg guy, and I had like throwing knives, and those were decent. A uh, little bit OP, man, but uh, it really rounds out the carnage with everything else. Clear stage, tango with the uh, mini boss, repeat. For me, it kind of had that Mega Man vibe, uh, like Mega Man from the wrong side of the tracks meets like OCP, RoboCop arcade goodness, which is all positives, all positives, all the way down. Um, you're going to get your $20 worth out of this probably in the first hour. I know I would. And um, yeah, really the only thing I can knock it for is lack of online co-op. Couch co-op, we're just coming out of the thing, man. So interesting timing. But for the game, it's completely solid. I uh, didn't think I was going to have too much fun with a running gun shooter. But hey, you put enough stuff in it. Turns out, yeah, you ended up with a good game. Good job, everyone. Three cheers. And over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, uh, the FURPS seemed to be capped at 60. Also, it didn't want anything to do with Mango Hut on my end. Uh, the uh, DualShock 4 worked out of the box with uh, the correct prompts. Uh, the Dual Sense, uh, it, you can only get it to run with the, I guess they're using a slightly older version of Unity that didn't support the DualSense all that well. So with Steam input, it works, but then you get the Xbox um, prompts. So there's that. The voice... uh, One of the things that I noticed about the controllers, uh, even if you turn them on while the game was already running, it worked. It it, it actually picked it up and switched to it correctly. It's like, oh, you don't see that every day, so uh, bonus points there. Uh, The voice acting is campy as hell, but I'm pretty sure that's exactly what they were going for. And it's a hipster pixel platformer. Just look at it. Um... As for the fun, well, the regular levels are pretty fun, like, uh, especially in arcade mode, the enemy placement and the amount, the sheer amount of enemies that you have, that you have to shoot. It's amazing. The bosses, on the other hand, well, calling them lazy would be, uh, praising them with, um, or dooming them with fine praise because 
I, I guess something along the lines of, oh, yeah, no bosses. Yeah, just give them progressively more HP and then some armor and then some bullshit gimmick where the player can't damage the boss unless they go through all of the steps. Yeah, I'd love a boss that actually tests my skills because that's what a boss is supposed to be. Are you angry it's because a you test of everything. Uh, no, a boss is supposed to be a test of everything that you learned all the way through the levels in order to get to it. And what it is, is just a bunch of artificially padded uh, with artificial difficulty for the sake of just having the boss waste five minutes of your time with absolutely no other reason. Uh, that's always that's never sat well with me it's a lot of games do that and it's the reason that i never finished um any of the borderlands because it gets to a point that it's like no too much of a bullet sponge can't be asked so yeah i do love the quips and the narrator is amazing but the actual gameplay like i said it's 50 percent fun and 50 percent pal uh, padding with bullet spongy bosses it this may have been acceptable in the 80s and the 90s but I've mentioned this in the past. I'm over the standard uh, action hipster pixel platformer because that was all I fucking played in the 90s. That was all I fucking played in the 80s. So, yeah, no, I'm kind of done with that. And the camp and the fact that the characters don't take themselves too seriously at all uh, is the sole reason that it doesn't get one share. So it gets two. <laughs> Dumbbells do not bounce that way. I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> they that's, do in this I, game. <laughs> I don't know, man. That, I, I'm not going to like throw in like old game and old game mechanics, but I play Neverwinter Nights. Um, uh, yeah. Neverwinter Nights uh, makes use of Dungeons and Dragons 3. You say that like it's a good thing. Yeah, th th we're, we're on five yeah. now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it came out anyway. in 2002. <laughs> no, it needs it needs to update it for new, new rules that came so, out in the future, Jordan, man. If you got some final thoughts for this, man, what, what, what do you think? I mean, man? It, it needs online multiplayer. That is the the main downfall of this game. It's really fun. I enjoy the environment. I enjoy the gameplay. It's challenging. the sh The combat feels really, really good. I wish they gave you more ammo, like Ven said. But yeah, but I mean, that, that, it, that's it, kind it of definitely had situations between like when you get the grenades and grenade launchers, and, and when you did you sliding. find the grenades useful at all? Yes, you have to learn to use them. It forces you. At one point, they're kind of necessary mm. if you want to get all the stashes. But you yeah, definitely get the, the uh, yeah. like barrel enemy triggers <laughs> that if you stage it right with the slides, and you're like, oh man, because mm -hmm. my favorite thing once I learned that I could speed slide down levels mm -hmm. the speed slide and the dodge dash thing that makes you invulnerable while you're dashing yeah that that's all great it's just the bosses oh yeah no we're going to put a boss that both has armor and you can't damage it unless the teeny tiny little person steps out for like five <laughs> seconds I, I just don't of of i just don't like the, the recharging uh, yeah, health bar i, I got through that boss and then i got through the canadians all of the canadians and every single one of the fucking canadians had fucking armor and i at, at that, one point that's, i just that's, 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 fucking yeah, works, that, that's, that's <laughs> true to life man Canadians I was like, if, if they didn't have body armor from head to toe i just complained that it's unrealistic they, they would freeze to death what, <laughs> what, what, what do you think what do you think of the cover mechanic stuff do you like it i mean it's there uh, it's, it's useless to it yeah. <laughs> it is I, effectively I mean, it, useless oh I how mean, about this it, here's it, a legitimate it, complaint the melee weapons suck all the ass Oh, the that, that melee is, weapons that are useless. Beyond useless. That, beyond no, useless. <laughs> I think there's just there was I, like a red herring. Like, yeah, get this and die quicker. I did beat a boss with a melee <laughs> weapon, though, but that's because I'm just like, I picked it up and that was the last hit on it. I'm like, does that work? Oh, okay. I guess right. it sucks. All right. Well, coming up next, we tried to debug pipe wire problems with zero yeah. feedback. That's right. going to be fun. Fun times. Hate mail. And if you'd like to point out that I'm just a contrarian asshole and I just poo-pooed all over a game that you very much enjoyed, feel free to do so and go fuck yourself while we're at it. This is the hate mail. <laughs> If you'd like to uh, just uh, throw some hate at me in particular, uh, well, then you can go fuck. Uh, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com and hit the contact button. Go, There's go a little form you gotta fill. .com? I mean, you can. It's going to be Subscribe expensive to with all the plane tickets, but you can. <laughs> 
<laughs> or yeah, that's pro- that'll probably be cheaper. Uh, and complain at Jordan uh, if the OnlyFans page hasn't been updated in a while. Make sure LGC Weekly is the um, show that you're sending your hate mail to. Otherwise, we may be inclined to misconstrue your hate mail as I don't know. Uh, constructive feedback. Listen, man, check this out, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Somebody has some very constructive feedback for one Pedro Mateus. This comes from E Shop, and he writes, "Yo, check this out. Check this out. Come the fuck on, Pedro. How is it you're the one who dicked this up? Question mark. Retro Arch. It's the default front end for Lib Retro. No one ever needed Emulation Station. It just happened to be very accessible for anyone with an." Rasp. Yeah, the RPI. Man. That's what I call it. Yo, yo, I walk into the pie store. I'm like, yo, you got any fresh RPIs? And they kick me out again. Um, so it offered the willfully ignorant a way to use the awesome Libretro without having to go through all the hassle of learning something. And rant, cheers. Isha. How do you respond, Pedro Mateus? <laughs> I could respond in the pedantic way, since apparently that's the way we're going. RetroArch is technically the distribution. Fuck you. I, wait, wait. <laughs> hey, do, 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 is RetroArch quantum? <laughs> it's plasma. Mm. Unless it's observed. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, the emulation station is very much the default uh, that comes if you install the distribution retro arch again pedantry this is all pedantry i know ishep knows not, not, uh, he not also actually sent responding me. to the thing mm. so <laughs> <laughs> i did <laughs> there wasn't a question there i don't see a f- single fucking question mark in that bit of hate mail so yeah <laughs> well, he says no one ever needed emulation stations it's just nice and accessible what's your response to that anti-accessibility uh, again, I, I don't see the question. That's his opinion. Need- He's entitled yeah, to it. Then, all right. Again, you're, 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 I'm you're not, not, not going to actually respond to his point, though. No. You're, you're just going to you're just going to be a pedant. Okay. Cool. Yeah. This this whole point is pedantry. So if we're going to get pedantry, I'm just going to get pedantic in return. That that's it. That's all he's got, man. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, all, that's all. That's all the other uh, pedantic Pedro here on Fox. <laughs> I'm not reading uh, the, this one. I will. <laughs> Hold on. I need to switch that tab. I need to find that goddamn tab. Uh, so this is from uh, Mono Lalia, and they say, A bit of a shot in the dark, as I'm not using Fedora, but with Pipewire drop-in jack from the AUR, which only seems to add user lib Pipewire not three jack to your L blah, blah, blah. I no longer need to start Jack or pulse Jack bridge or anything to do something special at all. Jack and pulse clients now live happily side by side in Carlo or Katia or whatever patch bay you might be preferring, uh, sees the image. I was rather surprised at how everything just became both better and simpler. That can't be real. Can it? And yeah, he, he's, he's brings out, uh, or they bring out a screenshot of just how everything looks in, uh, in Katia with Pipewire. And yeah, that's kind of, the the nice yep. thing about it is it's all just one software now. You you don't have to have bridges. You don't need to have any sort of in, intermediate interface. It's just there for you to plug stuff. That it's kind of the plan, man. That one universal interface until things start targeting Pipewire directly. And yeah, that, that, this is still going to be kind of a dodgy area though, because like things like Outdoor still having some issues, and we saw Steam it seems like oopsie doodle. Um, we want to work with the Pipewire too. Let's re-release the beta and. As far as like anything pro level, I guess what we're doing is pro level. You fuck right off. Um, it's just not there yet. But for consumer stuff, I mean, have you played with Pipewire at all, uh, Jordan? Fedora yeah, Boy? I have. I, I have. I played with it a little bit. It's running on the TV box. I switched the laptop here back to. Actually, I didn't even have to switch it back to Pulse because it's just running Jack. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can just run Jack and Pipewire side by side. There's just no crosstalk at the moment. Um, that said, yeah, it's it's there, right? Like if you're just using desktop use, if you need to wire stuff into other stuff, it's pretty convenient. The lack of network support is kind of shitty, but that'll come with time. I hope. Um, I, I do hope, and I hope it is not uh, Zeta-based, because that is not a replacement. And one of the beautiful things about NetJack is the remote computer doesn't need sound hardware on it at all. You now, don't need an interface. Now, here, here, here's here's the question for you. Would you prefer they take like a NetJack 1 or NetJack 2 approach? 
Nutjack. What we need is Nutjack one with latency reporting, mm. which only only because it will satisfy other programs that munch glue sticks when they run into it. I'm not calling anybody out directly, but I am saying Reaper doesn't have that mothering problem. Um, yeah, outside of that, but. I, I would like to see options. We're talking about NetJack. I know it's moon technology. Like NetJack 2 works as a hub server. So you just start up one instance and everybody connects to it, which is brilliant mm-hmm. for like one, two. You start pushing around like 16 tracks. One of those clients disconnects. Guess what? Jack's probably going to crash because that's just nature of the beast. Um, NetJack 1, that's what you're using with Jack 2, mm-hmm. is you can set up instances with IP addresses and go ahead and just say, this is how many channels you get, this is how many, this is what your latency is, this is the name and everything, and only that box from that IP address can connect, and it's a permanent connection. As soon as Jack starts, it's there. You can route stuff to and fro, and then think when things connect to it, boom, magic, it works. So, yeah, mm-hmm. options, like an amalgam of both of them, maybe, but I don't know. I don't know. There's like one person that can kind of maintain that check, I think. And he's like, it's, it's there. I want more people to yeah. use it. I'm working on a video called what the shit is net check. So is, is that formatted in the same way as what the hell is Kwanzaa? Uh, <laughs> it, it depends on when I get the, uh, you know, the rates back on what the animation is going to cost. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. You got, you got some union negotiations with the Hanukkah zombie too. Right. <laughs> All right, beautiful people, that's going to do it. We got a bounce out of here. So maybe, yeah, look at that. We did the thing. Ah, we made it with Reaper. <laughs> Hopefully it sounds okay. It'll sound better next week. If we decide to keep using it, I'm just playing around with it. But if you want to get in touch with me, ask me some questions, just say hi, stop in our Discord. It's there for uh, Twitch subs or Patreon or IRC. We moved IRC, so it's uh, irc.libra.chat. Hashtag um, Next Linux Gamecast. Gamecast. And that's bridge to the live show. So you can, you know, if you want to do that, we'll be in Discord and all that. And we can talk to each other. I'm looking at that screenshot that was sent and I'm like, what's wrong with Katie? And I was like, oh, right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. Just at Vin Stone on Twitter is where you can get a hold of me and come uh, at Vin on mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm the only one that still uses out of three of us, ironically. <laughs> Yeah, I am Jordan Swung, your Hanukkah zombie. You can find out what I'm thinking about each, each eight crazy days of the week at The Burning Fool on Twitter or watch me stream on Twitch on twitch.tv slash burning fool. And apparently I am Pedro Mateos, the person confusing retro arch with retro pie. More on that next week, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> you can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter. Hmm. Oops, Pe- Pedro was wrong on the <laughs> internet? No. No. <laughs> Never happens. Yeah, no, apparently, uh, yeah, re- the distro is RetroPie, not RetroArch. Oops. How, 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 how's that crow taste? Does it taste birdie? We gotta thank our lovely, lovely patrons, the people who are making this possible, our advisors, Omegas, and our Theron, our executive producers, Aldeus, Barb Bramp, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, and Holy Toast, and our still lone, solitary little Nicky fan kicking it in hell with Rondi Dangerfield, Mr. Darkwing. And the sea monsters, Jack B, Renault, Ryder X Machina, Trudgy, Vertanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Kyletics Cast, and of course the Death Notes, Nova K, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marcin, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresney, Kim, Smashley, uh, Chris, Stephen Jill, Doom Benjamin, Wad, Doom to Wad, and Stephen, Mr. Honest, Door to Door Geek, <laughs> Daniel, Fiscacci, Douglas, uh, I'm not going to take a step at that one, Chris J, Dodger. Evandro, Zeno, Daniel, Berlick, Lutris, Yad, Minus Nine, and Monica. Yeah, good stuff. Word stuffs. And apparently RetroPie ships with Emulation Station. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what did we learn tonight, Jordan? Uh, RetroPie is RetroPie. <laughs> and Pedro's wrong. five dudes.